Welcome back, YouTube. So today we're going to be talking about the upcoming crypto purge and really just a purge of the markets and some of the things that you're going to make sure you need to be doing in order to make sure you're in a position to survive this. And this is nothing more uh, than this simply being a market reset. And typically on a market reset, you'll have a really bullish period where things just pretty much um, literally go vertical. And um, at some point, obviously, um, it's not completely driven by the retail sector. So you have a lot of institutions and government uh, money that's being injected. And of course, at some point, they're going to want that money back or they're going to stop investing. So you'll have literally this will uh, turn things into like a bear market or it can even cause a recession if it's been really significant. And if you follow my channel, you'll know that I've been saying this for months, that this is institutional money. This is not retail money. They're propping up the economy. Um, you know that. Um, and for those of you that pay attention to like what's going on, uh, maybe just politically, but um, if you'll see that over the last year, we had things like record unemployment, but also the housing market was somehow rising and setting all time highs as well, even though no one was working. It was just literally madness that we had going on after the initial start of the pandemic. And part of that was due to the money that was raining in. So now the federal government is saying that they're going to uh, pretty much tighten up and stop their injections, uh, literally monthly injections into the market. And um, if you follow anything in crypto or even my channel, you'll know that um, I said I believe that the institutional money and the government is heavily involved in the crypto sector. And we've seen this and I, I got evidence of this when we started seeing these massive amounts of numbers vanish in like two days. Um, in December, we saw roughly um, like a little over half a trillion dollars disappear. And earlier last year, um, off the um, height of the actual bull run, we saw um, over 600 billion from Bitcoin alone just vanish um, and a little over a trillion dollars in value out of the market overall. So it was just these massive amounts of money that I know that with the speed and um, the amount of money that gets injected in, in the time frame, I just know there's no way this is retail. So I knew that the government was literally investing, taking profits and moving money around through the different markets. This is known uh, basically as QE or quantitative easing. And the Federal Reserve is pretty much saying that they uh, believe that they're going to um, start cutting back in around March or April. This drives fear because if you're not an investor, you're not sure which positions that the government is really um, invested, heavily invested in into the markets. And so Typically, you'll say that, OK, if I'm in the green now and the government's going to start pulling money out, this is going to send the markets into a bear cycle. And if you're already up, especially a lot, typically you're going to want to take some profit to kind of weather the storm and kind of sit back and try and catch this at around the bottom or even just 30, 40 percent below um, where you are. Specifically in the crypto market, um, if we are looking at a lot of fear because historically we have things like even like a, a crypto winter. And I use this example um, to a guy that was saying uh, like Dogecoin was dead in the comment section yesterday. He was saying it's at 17 cents and it's not doing anything. And I, and I brought up the example that, um, you know, we had Bitcoin peak at around twenty thousand dollars in like 2017, 2018. And it went down to three thousand dollars and literally stayed down at those levels for about two years. And, you know, so when you plunge the entire market like that, that's something called like a crypto winter. And that's literally... Um, I believe the people, especially people that are long in crypto and study charts to do technical analysis, that's one of the things that's kind of leading the fear right here, saying that what if this is a crypto winter? What does that mean for coins like Dogecoin and some of these other coins? And that's what I'm going to get into this video. You're going to really need three things in order to survive um, these contractions as far as for money leaving the market, especially institutional money. And a lot of these coins are really not going to exist afterwards. And that's why I call this a purge especially some of like the cash grabs, it'll be very, they'll, they'll find it much more difficult to exist um, or to literally survive this time frame because of the, uh, there's not really a, technically a lot of positions right now are being pushed as long positions and they don't really have the substance to be a long position. The three things that I believe you need, uh, a crypto needs to survive this is A is going to be like its uniqueness and going to have like a competitive advantage. The second thing is going to be value, its long-term uh, purpose. So this is kind of going to align with like vision and having an area for it to literally settle into the market. And of course, the number one thing I believe is most important for uh, crypto and even business is going to be the leadership. And if we're going to take this and apply this to like a coin like Dogecoin, because I know we talked about that a lot here, 
we're going to look at leadership. We're going to look at the uh, leadership and vision of uh, leaders like Elon Musk. Um, some of the other partners as well. I know we're doing like the Ethereum bridge. So we have a couple people um, there who are going to be giving like their insights to like the actual community uniqueness as far as for a long term purpose is going to be aligned with it actually becoming a currency and giving the uh, means of utility and having people use it. So this literally gives it a long term uh position as far as where it, it being worth it to actually hold it long term versus simply a bunch of people holding and saying that, OK, well, we just want this to go to the moon. We don't really care about the coin. And a lot of times when you have these other coins and some of these other knockoff coins, you know, these um, maybe Rottweilers and all this other kind of stuff like this that's going on, it's going to be really difficult for them to survive this this uh, time frame. Now, we still don't know how aggressive the Fed is going to be rolling back. So if it's going to be really aggressive or, um, is, or, or if they're going to do it very slowly, I imagine they're going to do it very slowly because this is a very delicate thing here. And the market is has really, especially when it comes like to uh, stability and stuff like that, the uh, with the, these new variants and stuff, um, it doesn't, I don't see them being like abruptly uh, cutting um, the injection of money because that would literally plunge us into a recession. Ironically, though, if you have not seen this, I'm going to pull up Elon's tweet here. He um, he mentioned that um, he believes uh, Elon Musk mentioned that he believes that we are going to potentially see a recession here sometime within the next few months. Um, he's saying that if history is any guy, not many will make it past the next recession. And what do you think? When do you think the next recession will be? And it says predicting macroeconomics is challenging to say the least, but my gut feel is maybe around spring or summer 2022. And that is literally aligning with the Federal Reserve saying that, OK, hey, look, we, we need to lighten our books some. Uh, we got a lot of money on the table that's being injected and we're going to kind of need to roll that back, especially if we're looking to get inflation under control. And this is really going to come down to community and the people that are invested into the crypto market, because again, the market is going to thin out. The reason that we, um, part of the reason that we got some of that explosive growth um, last year, especially in coins like Dogecoin and stuff like that, is because that was at the peak of the uh, the market so far. And it hasn't, the market didn't have, it didn't expand until after that. Because after this, um, I believe that the market expanded greatly. And you have all these new cryptocurrencies that are popping up every day. And everyone, everything is going to be the next Dogecoin. And, and the money was spread a lot more thin. So typically you will have these periods where things get reset and um, the, you, you know, you have like the technically, like, I don't want to say like the strong survive, but the coins with that fall into those three categories that are named, they have a really great chance of surviving. And typically these are the coins that appreciate over time. So you're going to want to make sure that you're investing in coins that, um, you know, if you, if you need to, if you have any doubts about your portfolio and thinking about rebalancing your portfolio, um, this would be the time, especially when you have these types of uh, things on the horizon. Um, this would be the time to invest in coins and that you know have um, plans for the future and have the catalyst and have the leadership to actually um, survive times like this. And you know, if you you know if, if you have some that are a little bit more risky. Um, you know, I'm not saying that you can't, you know, take those risks. Obviously, some of them will pay off. But if you um, are having any questions at all and you have some money that you necessarily can't afford to lose right now, I would consider this a great opportunity to reinvest because, again, I can't say this enough. Not all these coins will be around after the market resets. We often talk about coin count in the market, but right next to quantity is going to be quality as well. This is a prime example of going for some of those cheap coins um, where it can possibly come back to hurt you if a lot of this money flows out of the market, because we're already seeing predictions for $20,000 Bitcoin. And if that happens, we're going to see a lot of these coins test those support lines that have been there. And if they don't have the um, the merit, we're going to see some you're going to see like some probably some all time lows. So you're going to want to hang on to your um, your favorite coins and my coins. Obviously, I like Dogecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano. Um, Solana is going to do well. Um, so these are some of the um, the coins that I know for a fact that are going to survive this. So that therefore, you know, I'm either increasing my coin counting positions or I'm just not doing anything at all because I believe that, yes, outside of some short term uh, volatility. Um, I believe that they will be on the other side of this. Let me know what you think in the comments as far as for your portfolio and some of the coins that you believe are going to be on the other side of this. I would certainly open the floor to have that conversation. 
Uh, if you found any value in this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can always change your mind later, but here we cover the facts and we leave out the BS. And also like the video. Um, it helps YouTube share it to additional people so that we can grow together. And don't forget about BlockFi. If you open an account with them, you can get up to $250 in some of your favorite crypto, including Ethereum and Bitcoin. I appreciate all of you. Thank you. And until next time.